The Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Uh, and I get the feeling you've been cheated. Really live <laughs> from the Bell House in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> On the program today to shut down the longest in U.S. history, also illegal. <laughs> How many days until the air travel comes to a standstill and Trump and the Republicans increasingly getting the blame? As the Freedom Caucus says, no, what happened? What did you do? Oh, all right, sorry. <laughs> well, you know, the news. Uh, thank you. And meanwhile, Donald Trump really didn't want a record of his tete-a-tete -tete with Putin. <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard declares, Julian Castro declares, Tucker Carlson still a jerk. And, uh, <laughs> folks, welcome. welcome. <laughs> Jamie Pack. Also to my right, literally, of course, not metaphorically, these guys. <laughs> Michael Brooks. <laughs> to my left, Matt Lent. <laughs> and standing in the back, Near a video camera. <laughs> there he is, Brendan Flynn. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks so much for coming out uh, tonight. Really, uh, tonight. So, uh, really appreciate you coming. Okay, now it's good. <laughs> um, really appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, we've got hopefully a, a good show uh, planned for you. You know, it's weird to do this on a Sunday uh, because I think I've only done this on a Sunday one other day in the 16 years, more or less, that I've been doing this. Uh, and that was two years ago here um at um, at the uh, new york uh, uh podcast festival but i want to thank um the brooklyn pod fest for having us here uh and all the sponsors you've heard of her on pandora now so if you listen to your, if you listen to stuff on pandora or not a great way to listen to the podcast um so here's what we're gonna do we do have a guest he is a uh, a good friend of mine he's gonna come out a little bit later um He's good. <laughs> Why well, he laughed at that? Uh, but uh, and you guys can pick up your microphones. Uh, you ready for us? No. And, uh, yeah. Can I see what I think about this? Woo! Yeah. I said, Michael, you can pick it up. I didn't say talk into it. It's uh, steps. <laughs> At the end, also, we want to set aside uh, some time for some question and answers. Folks who traveled from God knows where and... Uh, IQ. Property right. <laughs> and we will go over an hour over schedule. Yeah. Um, have a torturous, exhausting, <laughs> generally painful engagement. We, um, <laughs> we're going to take questions. But uh, we're going to allow anybody who has some very localized issues for places that are not here to go first. And yeah. So, if there uh, is a city council election in rural Indiana. That's a little broad, but uh, it's something a little bit more specific than just a city council election across the country. But all right, we're, let's just uh, update you on the, the, the shutdown. It is now the longest in history, and... Um, we have never gotten to this place where uh, federal workers have not received a paycheck. That has been the, essentially the, the, 
the drop dead date in the past. And because of, of labor law, essentially, and out of uh, court rulings that came out in 2013, the fact that there are people working, specifically the, the ones who are forced to work, uh, hundreds of thousands of them, and are not receiving a paycheck is illegal, and that means nothing. Now, uh, we're just living in an era where the idea, uh, there, there's a lot of like you and what army um, is, is a, a, a big issue. Uh, Donald Trump, Gives no, uh, I guess we could say this, we're, we're live here, it's 18 and over, Fox, um, about what constitutes the law, and apparently Mitch McConnell doesn't either. Um, and this has been the problem since the middle of 2016, I would say, that the mainstream media, and to a certain extent the Democrats, are just simply not holding. Paul Ryan's gone now, but Mitch McConnell responsible enough for these things. Cuck Schumer. Cuck Schumer is Cuck Schumer. a big... <laughs> That's true. Cedar um, 2022. Uh, workers can always go on strike. They don't like how they're being treated. That's right? a, mm, core brand. Uh, they can. That's true. And, and Except in places where they can. Some TSA workers have walked out. We're starting to see that in terms of TSA workers. I mean, the... Um, the, those people who are deemed essential services, I don't know, actually, if they can go on strike without it being illegal. Yeah, that was a leading question. Yes, um, <laughs> but I, I, I suspect we're gonna start to see more work stoppages and we're gonna start to see people just basically leave. I mean, right now it's the TSA. They had to shut down one terminal in Miami because of the TSA. Um, I think if we see this start going on, you're gonna start to see um, FAA uh, controllers. Muslims being able to fly more easily. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's definitely like, some Leave upside. the belt on, too. Um, Let's go. That actually did happen to my friend the other day on his way back from LA. He's brown, he has a beard. He said they didn't even bother to racially profile him. There you go. <laughs> That's the upside. The, the, the drop in the sort of like standard FDA inspections, that could be the downside. So, um, and um, frankly, you know, we've talked about this on the show. I think Mitch McConnell is terrified of a primary challenge. And so he's not going to, uh, it's gonna take a long time before he decides to allow a vote in the Senate. People forget, 2016, he was enemy number one of the Republican uh, base. Was talking about Mitch McConnell as a huge, huge sellout, and so I think he's terrified. Meanwhile, on the other end of the spectrum, we talked about David Perdue, I think it was on Friday or Thursday, uh, time is dilated, as, as the saying goes. And um, Stacey Abrams was visiting uh, Capitol Hill on Friday, talking to Schumer and others, uh, ostensibly about a run in Georgia. I don't know if that was, you know, performative to put some pressure on uh, the uh, the Georgia. Uh, senators, but uh, very well may be. But we're, that, I mean, we're going to start to see as this drags on the, the you know, because we're in new territory here. We've never had a, a shutdown that's lasted as long. The implications of it are going to be, uh, are going to resonate for a while, I think. We still have 25,000 uh, federal workers who are waiting to get back pay from 2013. So, um, and that, and that court case that made them get that uh, extra time and time and a half for overtime when they worked because they were essential workers uh, is the basis of people's assessment that what's going on now, not paying people who are showing up to work,